Hey guys, it's Nuo Master, and welcome back to another Redstone video. In this video, I have something really cool to show you guys. This is a Lights Out game that I made. Um, I was just messing around with Benny, Benny's Cube, making a um, Lights Out games, and I came up with probably the smallest design ever. Um, I'm not sure, but it is pretty freaking small. It's about nine tall and four by four. Uh, Tad and Poker here is, uh, at the moment, trying to solve a puzzle that I have on here already. Now, if you don't know uh, what a Lights Out game is, basically, it's a uh, board with pressure plates on top and lights, and you try to make all the lights off by stepping on the pressure plates, um, and each pressure plate toggles the light. Oop, crap. Derp. Um, basically, each pressure plate toggles the light it's on and the surrounding lights and uh, so when you try to turn some off it'll turn others on and when you try to turn some on it'll turn others off and um, it's very difficult actually um, as he is finding out right now um, but yeah anyways um, this also has a reset, which is another bonus to um, this design, because sometimes uh, you can create games that you can't solve just because um, if you run on it too fast, for example, it can derp up, and hitting that button will turn all the cells off. It's kind of cheating, as some people have put here, um, since it turns the cells off automatically. But uh, yeah, it's really fun to play. Um, if you are a member of the OR server, you can come on here and mess around on this. Uh, Benny actually made his whole plot floor into this game. Uh, I, th I thought, thought that was kind of funny. Um, but yeah, anyways, I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, make a uh, demonstrate demonstrate how to build it. Here's one cell right here. Um, it's pretty small. I like it. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead now and, uh, demonstrate how to build this. Okay, so, the first thing that you're gonna want to do to make one of these things is to make just the, the screen part on top here. Uh, it's pretty simple. It's a, uh, 4x4 four four screen. Let's give a little bit more space here. Um, what I did is I just, uh, made a, uh, circle of lamps. And then in the middle, a uh, pressure plate. And uh, actually, one of the, one of the lamps needs to be uh, down. That's just so it can it can be powered from below. Um, that's specific to this design. Um, if you try designing your own, you might not need to do that. Um, I know Benny didn't. He found uh, he basically modified my design so that it didn't need to do that, which is pretty cool. But it does make it slightly bigger. So, now that you have this, let's also uh, make the uh, little torch tower here for the uh, output. Um, it'll be right there, just like that. Uh, I'm going to be basically copying this design over here so you can see how to build it. Now, um, what you need is a bus that powers the neighboring cells and the cell itself. Now, what, how I did this, this is a, um, I don't think anyone's figured it out. Um, this before, but um, Benny said this was really uh, interesting the way I did it, and I'm building this backwards, aren't I? Yes, I am. It's supposed to be like that. Okay, but yeah. Anyways, what I do here is I have these repeaters, basically on every side. Uh, in the stackable version, it isn't exactly on every side. You can see that some of them, like if you stacked it, this one would be right here, for instance. Uh, just like that. So uh, that is actually right here. So uh, two of them are on the stackable version. The other two are implied. So it's implied that there will be one here when I stack it. Now the next thing you need to do 
is to come underneath this, and uh, this actually needs to be a slab, and put more repeaters here. These are for the sole purpose of powering this cell's T flip flop. The cell, the T flip flop for this cell. And then uh, one right here. I believe the back one also needs to be a slab, yes? Yes. So uh, put this, and this also needs to be moved down so you can grab the output. So um, just like that. Now what this is going to do, I'll just demonstrate it, is it's going to power this cell, right? But it's also going to power the neighboring cell. So when you stack it, there'll be another one right here. And there'll also be another one right here, in where I'm pointing to in midair, one right here, and one right here. So when you hit the button, um, it will power all of the cells around it. And Tatten Poker it looks like he's given up on my puzzle, and now he's proceeding to shoot me. Um, anyway. Um, <laughs> Let's just ignore that. But uh, yeah, anyways, the next thing we need to do is to just set up the uh, T flip flop itself. Now that is a um, pretty simple design. It's the same design I've shown off in the counter video. It's uh, the pistonless one. I, I made decided to make this completely pistonless. Now this three tick repeater here and this torch right here make up the monostable circuit for that T flip flop. So when I pulse this, that's going to receive a uh, two tick off pulse, which will allow the uh, T flip flop to toggle. So if I have this here, this is the T flip flop design from before. That, now if I hit this, we can see it's toggled on. If I hit this again, it's toggled off. Now, this is basically how the cell design works. When I hit the button, it will toggle the neighboring cells using this uh, busing design here. Um, as you can kind of see, if I, uh, let me just hit this. Uh, you can't really see it very well, but um, he's, he's messing around with it too. Um, but yeah, next we have to get the uh, output out. Now I already built this torch tower here, which conveniently is placed right next to this output right here, which is very, makes a very nice output to the screen here. You can see now that T flip flop is toggled for this cell, and when I toggle this, it turns the light on. Now if I toggle it in, it turns the light off. Now we are almost done. The last thing we need to do is the reset. The reset was very tricky. I had to um, think about it for a long time to uh, get it. Now, resetting this type of T flip flop is very difficult. I already explained that in my counter video. Um, but I found a very, uh, very easy way to do it here. Let me just turn this on so you can see it. Basically, the only thing keeping this saved right now is this torch. And if I power that torch, no matter what this is, if it's on or off, that's going to turn off and stay off. So that is how I reset. I power this redstone block right here with a line. Now, how I do this to make it fit, it was kind of tricky. I needed a uh, kind of a repeater line kind of thing. And uh, it's better to see in this one. You can see the repeater comes through here and resets all of the torches. Um, let me just show you on this side since this side actually does something. Yeah, it uh, comes through here and powers this and turns off that torch right there, which resets the T flip flop. Now, um, this cell right here is almost done. There's exactly one more thing I have to do. I have to put a redstone piece right here. Now you're like, you might be like, why? Why do you do this? 
What's the point of a redstone piece right there? Well, if I stack this, it would put a piece of redstone right here. And what this does is it prevents the signal from interfering with something that's right here, I believe. Um, actually, I can't remember exactly where it was. But it prevents the signal from interfering with something. If I can get in here. Uh, I must use compass. Use compass. Yeah, right here. It prevents this signal right here from interfering. If that was like that, it would come in here and power this repeater when it shouldn't be. So that's why that piece of redstone is there. Now, uh, yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much um all all um all you have to do to this. And now I'm having people everywhere. <laughs> all right. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. One quick final note: I actually forgot to place a block right here. Yeah, that's that's a very important block. Yep. Anyways, yeah. Thanks for watching. See you next time.